Welcome back. So far in the series we've worked through setting up VirtualBox, installing Ubuntu, and in this video we will be doing a little customizing to your fresh Ubuntu install. Alright, first off, let's set up Gwibber. Left click on your username in the top right corner of your screen. Click on Add. We're going to add my Twitter account, just for a test. Uh, click on Authorize. In this dialog, you'll be prompted to enter your Twitter credentials, your username and password. Now let me close the Update Manager. Alright, punch in our username and password for Twitter. Scroll down and click on Authorize App. This will set up a connection between Twitter and Gwibber to allow you to pull down the most recent tweets that have been put up on your wall by people that you follow. To verify, let's left click the envelope, drop down to Broadcast. That's Gwibber, that's what it looks like. You'll notice there's the little blue shaded area for Twitter. The beauty of Gwibber and the social me bar that, that this feature is allows you to tweet, update Facebook, or Identica all from the taskbar without having to physically log into their the service websites. You'll notice that there are some tweets coming in now from people that I follow on Twitter. You'll notice a little pop-up bubble on the right hand side of my screen. Um, keeps popping up with updates. Uh, that'll take just a few moments to finish up. Let's go ahead and add Facebook to that. We we'll left click the username, go down to broadcast accounts, select add, choose the drop down, go to Facebook, Hit Add, Authorize. Once again, same steps as we did for Twitter. Uh, this will take us to a Facebook login page. We're going to click in the username and password. I'm also going to take the option to keep me logged into Gwibber. Punch in our credentials for Facebook. And click Login. That will give our fresh Ubuntu install a little a little social networking love. To make sure that that worked, left click on the envelope again, come down to broadcast, you notice we have some messages and things waiting on us. If you scroll down the left hand side, you'll notice there is now a Facebook section. Um, if we were to click on that, we'd be able to see the most recent updates from my Facebook friends. One of the first things I like to do anytime I do a fresh install of an operating system is install more web browsers. You can never have enough web browsers. So if you'll notice, by default, Ubuntu 11.04 includes Firefox. Firefox is a great web browser. I use it, love it, but I also like to use Google Chrome. Um, I just like its interface. We'll search up here in the top corner for Chromium. Click it. Take the more info option. You'll notice here's a, a page about the app. You'll see there's a screenshot. There's also a section that tells you how much space it'll take up on your disk and how large the download is. And user reviews. We'll click the install button punch in our password, that's the same password you use to log on to your system. You notice we have a installing status bar. We're going to skip ahead a little here. If you may notice the jump on the status bar. But you'll use the Ubuntu Software Center to install other software as well. Going forward, the Software Center will continue to grow within future Ubuntu releases. They've already made some changes for the next release of Ubuntu. Um, I'll show you a second way that you can install Chrome We'll launch Firefox and go to www.google.com forward slash Chrome. And you'll notice that there's a section that will detect your operating system. We're going to take the blue button for download. You'll notice there's four packages. There's 32 and 64 bit of the Debian package and the same for the RPM packages. We're using Ubuntu. It's Debian based. So we'll take the Debian based package and click accept. In this case, we'll just let the Ubuntu Software Center do its job. Uh, no need to download it from the Google site since we're already working on it. This will take just a moment longer. Once it's finished installing, you'll notice that the status bar changes in the Software Center to Installed and now has a Remove button. Should you decide to uninstall it, just simply open the Software Center, find Chromium, and click Remove. You'll notice now it's been included to the Internet menu. Uh, first run, you'll have to pick your default search engine. I chose Google. Uh, you can close these tabs if you're familiar with Chrome. If not, you might want to give them a read. Uh, they give you some overview of how to use the browser. We'll make sure it works. There it is. 
One thing's missing, I like to add a launcher up beside the Firefox icon on the top taskbar, so we'll right click and go add to panel. Take the application launcher, click internet, drop down, go to Chromium, click add. You can do that for any application that you've installed. We'll drag it over, let it bump up against the Firefox icon, make sure both browsers work, and they do. All right. Now, let's add Ubuntu Tweak. Go to Applications, Accessories, and Terminal. Stretch out the screen so we can see what we're typing. And the commands you need to type in are sudo space add dash apt dash repository space ppa colon t u a l a t r i x forward slash ppa and hit enter. You'll be prompted for your password. Punch it in. Hit enter. Now we need to update apt. So type in sudo space apt dash git space update and hit enter. While the repositories are being checked, Ubuntu Tweak is extremely handy, especially for new users. Uh, it kind of consolidates all of your settings into one application. All right, our last command we need to type is sudo space apt dash get space install space ubuntu dash tweak and hit enter. It'll go ahead and download ubuntu tweak and install it for us. Also check the video description for these commands. I'll have them typed up there um, if you have any questions. But ubuntu tweak is extremely user friendly. Uh, it allows you to customize ubuntu all from one place. You can add programs, you can edit the source code, uh, there's all kinds of stuff you can do through there. So go back up to applications after we close terminal, come down to system tools and choose Ubuntu Tweak. Here we are, Ubuntu Tweak. Let's go ahead and double click the title bar, that'll blow, blow up the screen for us. As you notice, let's stretch that out, as you notice there are a lot of choices in Ubuntu Tweak. It's pretty intuitive, uh, pretty handy for a new user. You'll notice if you go back up and click on the system settings, all of these settings are available through Ubuntu Tweak. Just for example, let's click on the login settings. You'll notice that the items are grayed out, so click on the unlock button, punch in your password, hit enter. Now we can change these. We can tell it not to play a sound at login. We can change the login background wallpaper, etc. Let's go up here. No, we'll click no. Click on Application Center, click Yes. This is another way you can install programs, or packages, as they're called in, within the Linux world. It'll update itself. It looks a lot, looks, looks similar to the Ubuntu Software Center. If you scroll down, you notice there's a lot of apps through here. Um, of course, you could add PPAs and repositories and sources, and that would give you access to more apps that you could choose to download. You notice back that there we had Chromium. We could have installed Ubuntu Tweak and installed Chromium just as easily as we did through the Ubuntu Software Center. Um, you can install some themes. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff here. So we're going to scroll back up. I tell you what, let's go ahead and install Avant Window Manager, AWM. Punch in your password. We'll be using this in the next video. So we'll go ahead and install that while we're here. You notice it's going to go out and download the package files that's needed. Uh, that includes the, the actual program and its dependencies. After downloading, you'll install it. You can click the details drop down and check it out. It looks a lot like what you would see on a terminal screen. Uh, you can sit here and watch the, the status of it if you're that geeky and would like to do so. Um, personally, I don't watch it all the time. I'm having an issue installing a program. I will watch the details because I can see where it hangs. Otherwise, we'll just minimize that and let it go back and complete its install. This won't take just another moment or so. Well, maybe it's taking its time. I'm sorry. Alright, it's just about finished. 
Once it's done, you'll be able to go up and locate the program in the Applications menu, just as we did with Chromium. Okay, it says Update Successful. Uh, you can also search the application listing by category as well. All right, let's scroll down and look at some of the other settings we can change. Uh, we have a package cleaner. It'll do a little handiwork for us. A source code editor to edit the source under the hood of Ubuntu. The update manager. Check it out. It's the same, the same update manager we see pop up periodically when it's time for new updates and security updates. Uh, click on refresh. It'll go out and check your system versus what's out there to make sure that you're up to date. If you're not, it'll bring back a list of of results that you need to install to be up to date. You can check all, click install updates, and it will take off and do its updates. I'll do that later. Uh, no need to do a video on that. It's pretty self-explanatory. You can change compass settings, desktop icons, desktop recovery, GNOME settings. Then if you scroll through, you can see there's all kinds of options you can play with. Windows Manager Settings. This is a question we get asked a lot in the Linux world. When Ubuntu switched the close, minimize, and maximize buttons from the right to the left, you can change that back through Ubuntu Tweak. That's probably the easiest way. Uh, there, are, there is another way to do it, uh, but Ubuntu Tweak is the easiest way to, to flip those buttons back where you want them. You can choose some templates. You can set up some shortcut commands see your computer details that's about the hardware under the hood of your PC there's a file manager uh, Nautilus settings power management and security settings so that's about it check out our next video we'll be installing Avant Windows Manager and doing some further customization of Ubuntu you know, thanks for watching